Hello, I am Lieutenant C. Becky, an officer representative for 888 Avenger Royal Canadian Air Cadet Squadron. To the newly parents and interested applicants, welcome to the administration briefing. This briefing is to inform newly parents and newly applicants on how to register into the cadet organization. This video will not entail information about the cadet program. However, if you inquire more information about the cadet program, it is encouraged of you to go to www.cadets.gc.ca. This website will inform you all the news and information you may want to know prior to joining a cadet unit. The goal of this briefing is for you to have a general understanding on how to fill in these registration forms so that when you arrive, you have all the necessary information for your son and or daughter. For simplicity, I will say applicant. The last thing we would want for you is to come back again and repeat the administration process due to missed information. It is important to understand that all written information must be true in accordance to the applicant and deadlines for registration requirements are met in order to fully register the applicant. If you have any questions regarding the application process, then you are welcome to bring these questions during the registration nights. Let's get started. Prior to coming in, the parent or guardian should come with the applicant. This will give a general idea, not only for the applicant, but for the person filling in the registration form the location of the unit, who the staff are, and where to check in for any questions during operational hours. Furthermore, it gives us the opportunity to meet you. Not only bringing the applicant is essential, to make the registration process smoother, it is best to bring the following. Identification card, care card, and checkbook. Let's explain these into some detail. In order to ensure the applicant is within age, the organization requires one piece of identification. IDs can include Canadian passport, birth certificate, resident card, or a Canadian provincial or federal agency card. These will be verified by staff, followed by the card being photocopied for our records. In BC, there has been a change at which the applicant's driver's license or resident card now have the applicant's care card number. This 10-digit number is located at the back of the card and starts with a 9. This number is required during the registration process. I am sure as a parent there are many things we need to remember, one of which is probably not your applicant's care card number. Therefore, Bringing this card can help fill in the application much quicker. If you have taken the time to research about the Cadet Program, the Cadet Program is also in affiliation with the Cadet League of Canada. Much like the Cadet Organization, the League is filled with committee members who help the Cadet Program. Therefore, when you arrive, you may be greeted by a League representative and the unit's sponsoring committee. The unit sponsor committee is made up of parents who help the cadet unit's needs. Members in the committee can range from no previous to previous cadet experiences. If you are interested about making connections with other parents and getting involved with the organization, this is one of many ways to register. Simply connect with the sponsoring committee during the registration process. When meeting the sponsoring committee, there is a registration fee that varies with different units. I will not go into detail about this. However, I will say though that the fee goes towards the applicant's training each year. If you think about the cost for how much your applicant may get from the program, it is simply worth it. I used to be a cadet myself and the cost was minimal for the amount of opportunities I have had. My parents were impressed. Most sponsoring committees recommend using a check. However, 
Some do accept cash or they use the square reader for credit or debit cards. Information about this will be further explained during registration. Do keep in mind these are general items we expect every applicant to have ready. However, throughout the video, there may be sections at which you may need to bring extra documentation. Please pay extra attention as to which sections require those documents. Okay, so now that you know what you need to bring and the reasons behind it, the one big thing that can be very daunting, however, extremely important is the paperwork process. There are several forms you will have to fill out so be prepared to stick around as there are many of you and a few staff members assisting you. Please keep in mind that these forms are not to discriminate the applicant. Rather, these forms are to ensure all information has been collected and confirmed for the safety and well-being of the applicant. A failure to receive all truthful information the applicant will not be authorized to participate in cadet training and activities. As a cadet organization, our responsibility is to provide safe training. This includes ensuring the applicant is healthy and if there are any means of limitations, then modifications will be conducted. Although I am providing you information about these forms, it is your responsibility to read through the entire information. I will provide you a brief summary. However, do not take this video as a means of me covering all topics. Lastly, please keep in mind the official languages in Canada are English and French. Therefore, you will see both English and French written on these forms. The first form you may see in your application package is the collection use and disclosure of personal information. This form is to provide you details regarding information being collected will be stored safely and in the means of not randomly publishing to the general public. Information is stored in such a way that your applicant's profile is seen by staff who are affiliated when necessary. For example, an officer who may be responsible for accessing the applicant's medical conditions would be the members who are in direct responsibility of the applicant. This also includes our headquarters. Other units who do not have direct responsibility will not have access to these files. Furthermore, as the cadet organization tries to promote and showcase its contributions within the community, social media may be used in such a way of taking photos of the applicant, but personal information will not be published. At the end of the form, the applicant and the parent or guardian must sign acknowledging this. Next will be the application for membership. The application for membership form is two-sided. The information provided prior to the application sheet is essential for you to read. In this video, I will be summarizing it briefly. However, it is your responsibility, again, to read before signing. I have encountered several applicants who would say no to certain sections, which were actually yes, or vice versa. Please print neatly as it may be difficult to interpret your writing. In section one, it asks of you what element you are registering. Much like the Canadian Armed Forces, there are three elements, Navy, Army, and Air. As you see here, it is similar. You see Sea Cadets, Army Cadets, and Air Cadets. Be sure to select the correct element. 
Since you are registering under the Air Cadet program, you should make an X as you see here. Please put the unit you are joining. In section two, it asks of you if you have been in the cadet program before. What this means is if you have registered with any cadet element, you should select yes. The reason being is staff members will be able to find you where we can contact their previous cadet unit to transfer their cadet credits. There have been instances where applicants were cadets from different units and their credits were never transferred, indicating they are starting from the beginning. This does not benefit the applicant and the staff member. On the other hand, if you are completely new, then please select no. A common error is when an applicant selects yes and writes in the unit they are joining. This will not make sense if you are brand new to the cadet organization. In section three, the subcategories are asking the applicant's personal information. It is important to read what each box is asking, followed by writing neatly. Staff members will be verifying your application with your identification cards at which if the information does not match, we will not register your cadet as this is misleading information. This becomes a serious issue because some encounters rely on these information and wrong information can lead to a delay. This is definitely in particular with cadets going to summer training at which the applicant's name do not match. This can ultimately lead your applicant to not going to summer training due to the possibility of misidentification. Summer training will not be briefed here. Some things to consider. Surname means the applicant's last name or family name and given name means the applicant's first name. It is best to use the name as printed on the applicant's identification card. We understand the complexity of names of which some would choose to write the applicant's nickname. It is crucial not to write the applicant's nickname as this will not match the applicant's identification card. We can, however, write the name you choose to be known as, however, it will be written on the applicant's folder. Again, please write neatly as errors usually occur from untidy writing. In section four, it talks about a health insurance plan. If you are a BC resident, you're covered under the Public Medical Service Plan, also known as MSP. The number is your personal health number, also known as PHN. If you are not using MSP as a provider, please indicate your provider insurance. For example, Westlife, Pacific Blue Cross, or Manual Life, followed by the insurance number and the expiration date. For the most part, usually if you have a service card, you can use the applicant's PHN. In section five, it talks about any legal limitations, obligations, and conditions of the applicant. This can range from many circumstances However, if you select yes, there needs to be a documentation as to what these conditions are. The documentation is to provide proof and again, safety for the applicant. Remember how I mentioned the general items to bring? Well, this is not a general item because this is very specific for the applicant. Information will be photocopied for records and will be given to our headquarters. If the applicant does not have any limitations, then select no. In section six, this talks about parental information. As much as we would like to know about the applicant, we will also need to know the applicant's parental relation or guardianship. If you have a common email address, please write this down as some information will be sent through email. These could include newsletters, travel itineraries, field trip forms, etc. Please write neatly and provide details as necessary. Furthermore, 
we understand that every applicant has a different familial history. Therefore, if there are any parental relation or guardianship that have limitations, a form of legal documentation is required. This is another specific documentation that is not part of the general items as discussed. Again, documents will be photocopied and sent to our headquarters. Section 7 talks about the applicant's health information. This section is quite important because it often gets neglected or misread. Again, please read and answer the questions truthfully. A failure to provide information will immediately lead to a full stop of cadet training and activities. The first five questions are general medical questions that relates to cadet training. Please note, if you have answered yes to any of these five questions, a detailed health questionnaire must be filled plus other specific forms to fill out. Let's look at this closely. Question one is asking you if the applicant has any possible food sensitivity or allergy. For example, having wheat may cause the applicant to have nausea. A DHQ and a food sensitivity form must be filled out. Another example, if the applicant were to eat peanuts and has severe hives and shortness of breath, this is known as a severe allergic reaction. Therefore, a DHQ and an anaphylaxis emergency plan must be filled out. Question three asks you whether if the applicant takes medications daily. Examples of medications include insulin, Concerta, Seroquel, and other medications. A detailed description of its dose, how frequent, and how it's administered should be indicated on the applicant's DHQ. Question four is like question one. However, if the applicant does have a non-food allergy, but a severe allergic reaction, for example, bee stings, a DHQ, a non-food related anaphylaxis form, and an anaphylaxis emergency plan must be filled out. Moral of the story here is, if the applicant has a severe allergy to something, an anaphylaxis emergency plan must be filled out. It is crucial to abide to the rules that are indicated in the anaphylaxis emergency plan. The applicant must have at least two non-expired labeled EpiPens and a physician's signature on the form. If you have answered yes to question four or five, then you must fill in question number six. Common errors include failure to provide truthful information and marking no to question number four or five, followed by marking all no for question six. Okay, so who here is confused? If you are, then do not worry. Honestly, I would be too. We will definitely go over this later in the video. If there are no medical conditions, then please mark no as you see here. Lastly, section eight and nine are the agreement and consent for both the applicant and the parent or guardian. Both must sign and date of when the form is filled. Remember, if you have answered yes for the applicant's food sensitivity in section seven earlier, you will have to check off whether if you consent the cadet organization to provide meals for the applicant. All applicants will then meet with the sponsoring committee. Forms for the registration fee may appear differently for each committee. However, here is an example from 888 Avenger. The registration night is a chance for you to speak with possibly a league or a sponsoring committee member and followed by paying the applicant's annual fee. For our unit specifically, the annual fee is $200. However, when you go to other units, the annual fee may be similar ranges. Again, 
This fee is to help with the applicant's training, rather if it is paying for facilities, training supplies, travel opportunities, meals, flying, or other cadet activities, the expenses paid is worth the applicant's learning and experience. For those of you who do not require to fill in the detailed health questionnaire or anaphylaxis form, you may stop here. There may be other administration tasks that will not be briefed here. However, you will know when you arrive. Please remember the registration process will take some time, therefore expect to be at the unit longer than you expect. We look forward to meeting you, and if you have any questions, then please do not hesitate to ask during the registration process. For other questions, please contact us. For applicants who do require to fill in the health questionnaire and anaphylaxis form, please continue to watch. I understand how much paperwork is required and it can be a daunting task to complete. However, remember these forms are to provide the staff information about the applicant, which can benefit the applicant's training. Safety is our number one priority. A lack of information or a delay in response to receiving such information will lead to a full stop of the applicant's training and activities. The detailed health questionnaire also known as the DHQ, is to provide information for all medical conditions. Section one and two are usually filled in by office staff. Depending on the registration process, you may be receiving this form the following week or the same evening at which you are required to fill to the best of your knowledge truthfully. You are to fill in section three and four of which encompasses the applicant's health details. As you can see here, there are a list of questions for you to answer. There are two pages for you to have enough space to write your information down. In this slide, I have cut up the spaces for you to see the questions clearly. If on a legal size sheet of paper, this will be on the first side. On a legal size paper, this will be the second side, followed by having you to sign the form stating you have truthfully answered the questions to the best of your capability. Once the form is completed, the form must be folded and sealed in an envelope. The envelope should have the applicant's full name and titled DHQ. Information will then be processed and sent to our headquarters for review, and it will be notified in our cadet system regarding the applicant's medical condition. If the form is filled incorrectly, it will be sent back for you to fill again. Therefore, it is important to read and answer the questions correctly. There is a sheet that is provided for you on how to fill in this form. However, if you still have questions, you are encouraged to ask these during office hours. For applicants who have a severe allergy, also known as anaphylaxis, to any kind of allergen, such as a food item, bug bite, etc., you are expected to read and fill in the consent and anaphylaxis emergency plan. The consent form is to inform you about who and when to use an auto injector, like an EpiPen, and where would the information be stored. The anaphylaxis emergency plan informs the staff what to do in case the applicant has an anaphylactic reaction. Majority of the staff members will have a minimum requirement of standard first aid, at which providing medical assistance, like anaphylaxis, is covered in training. The emergency anaphylaxis plan has several components which may require you to bring a few extra items or brought in the following week. These components are a recent headshot photo and a physician's signature. 
we are aware applicants will grow and facial structures will change. Therefore, having a photo at which the applicant is at six years of age may look completely different from 12 years of age. A valid physician signature is to verify the information as most, if not all, EpiPens are prescribed. Please be advised to inquire the physician's MSP or verification number. You do not need to understand what this is. Be sure to fill in the name and the information to the best of your capabilities. I understand how inconvenient it would be to come back the following week to complete these forms, especially requiring a physician's signature. Therefore, please look at our unit's website to download the anaphylaxis consent and plan prior to your arrival. The detailed health questionnaire will not be provided until you arrive during registration. As mentioned previously, if you have checked off yes to any food or non-food allergy, there are forms you must sign respectively. These forms are to indicate you are permitting the cadet organization to provide food for your applicant during cadet training and activities. Depending on the circumstance of your applicant, you may fill in one or both forms. During the registration night, you will be given the appropriate form. Please note there are two different consent forms. One indicates non-food allergy and the other is a food sensitivity. In this package, the first page will indicate medical information at which you are encouraged to read. The first page will inform you the difference between an allergy and sensitivity. If you're not sure what these terms mean, then it is important for you to read this sheet. Remember, these forms are important for you to read as this determines the health and safety of the applicant. Again, the cadet program will not allow the applicant to partake in any cadet training and activities due to safety concerns. And that's it. See how simple that was? I know there was a lot of information. However, hopefully this will better prepare you knowing what information we require. If you have any questions, then please do not hesitate to ask during the registration process. We look forward to meeting you and for you to join this amazing program. Please look at our unit's website for details regarding when registration occurs. Until then, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us located on our website.